Hello everyone, welcome to Stochastic Calculus for Finance 1. This is section 3.3 .3, where in a continuation of the previous video where we were trying to solve the optimal investment problem for an agent. And here I will show another approach to do that. So just as a reminder, rem what we're trying to do is we have like basic, let's imagine we have a binomial model and we have a two pair binomial model. And here, this is like the tree for, which represent the asset that the investor can invest can can invest in the asset that the investor can buy and you can see this tree is consistent with these parameters and given these parameters we can calculate the risk neutral probabilities and we have seen how to do that so the risk neutral probabilities are, are given here and for a moment we assume that real world probabilities are over here and our wealth equation is represented by this equation and this just means shows like uh, the, how the investor can invest between the asset or the stock and the money market security. So this is the money how how the money market security uh, evolves over time, and this is basically the value of the stock holding of the agent or the investor. And the investor has a utility function, and for our utility function we're using uh, Ln. And remember. LN is a good utility function to use if you want to represent a risk averse investor because it's concave, non decreasing, and has all those good characteristics. Then, give us the utility function. What the investor wants to do is to find the optimal trading strategy by trading how to trade well, the stock and the money market so that they can he can maximize the expected utility from his portfolio with. And in, given that he's, have a, he's starting with like an initial wealth of X0. And in our case, we're assuming the initial wealth the investor is starting with is 4. And in the previous video, we have shown, we have shown that basically the expected utility of the invest, investor from the portfolio is equal to this long equa uh, equation here, long relation here. And what we're really trying to do is find these unknowns, which describe, is going to derive how much the investor needs to trade in a stock and consequently the remaining of his money in the money market. So these are the unknown. So given we have this expression, we can really use a software like, for example, Solver in Excel to try to maximize this expression here. And then we'll find delta 1 H, delta 1 T, delta 0, which then will tell the investor what his game plan should be. But here I will take another approach to show uh, how we can arrive to derive the same uh, numbers using a using a different strategy, this different method. Uh, yeah, so as a reminder, I'm just putting these values here because we have already compared this in the previous video. Uh, the value of our wealth at, at the time 2, if we get two heads, is defined by this equation. The value of our, health, of our wealth, if the stock price first goes up or we get a head, and then the cut price go down, we get a tail. Uh, this is going to the value of our portfolio, etc. So given this, now we can try to examine uh, the problem. So the expected utility at time two of x two is nothing but given by this by this relation here. And since this is using the real world probabilities, then all we need to do is find like n of x x having like uh, two heads. What will be the value of this random variable? And then we multiply it by the probability of getting two heads. Then we take the probability of getting one head and a tail, right? And multiply it by the, val the uh, utility if we get head and a tail. And we do that also going forward for all the for all the state of the world. And then that's how that's what actually this expected utility is. Now we have a f relation for the expected utility and we want to maximize it. So the way we can maximize it is we can basically take the partial derivative with respect of the unknowns. And remember the unknowns are basically these amounts, right? Which we describe how the investor should trade. So these are the unknowns. So we can take the partial derivative with respect of each of the unknowns and set it to equal to zero. Then we can solve for those uh, for, for the unknowns and then we'll get the uh, optimal strategy. Well, so let's do that here. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to delta 0, and then we set that partial derivative to 0, then we get this expression here. So I can show very quickly how this expression is obtained. 
So the partial derivative of the expected value of u of x2 with respect to delta 0 is nothing but uh, the partial derivative with respect to delta delta 0 of this whole thing 4 over 9 ln of x h h plus da 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 right and the other stuff is just here so i will just focus on showing how where this where this value is where this value is coming from and then we can imagine the order is just some boring algebra okay so this so this partial derivative here um so when we take this partial derivative we find 4 over 9 and this is the log so okay, that's like x x h h i'm just calling it prime to say we de we're taking the partial derivative with respect to de de uh, delta zero divided by x h h and there's just like four over nine divided by x h h and this stuff here is basically just taking this whole thing partial derivative with respect to delta zero right so this thing has no delta zero so it will be zero this is a constant also it will be zero and when we take the partial derivative with delta zero of this amount we just we just left to 15 over 4 so that's just 15 uh, over 4 right so now where this 5 over 12 time thing is all this stuff is coming from well we can just have like, like take this 4 and put and put it there so we have 4 over x h h and then we have a 9 here 15 and a 4 right but 15 is actually just 3 times 5 and 9 is just 3 times 3 right so we have this 3 here can cancel can answer the other 3 at the bottom down here and we just get 3 times time 4 which is 12 and we get the we left with the 5 of the numerator which is here and this 4 over x x x which is just this so this is where it's coming from so it's really not hard it is just like this is not coming this is nothing mysterious this is just some basic algebra we need to do and then we can go ahead and do the same thing for take the partial derivative with respect to delta 1 h partial derivative with respect to delta h1 t so these are unknown so if you stop here you notice that you have an issue right because this represents an equation with four unknowns but we have four unknowns but we only have three equations right so somehow we need to be able to find a, a fourth equation so we'll be able to solve find basically what the optimal wealth we can really get uh, can be at the end of the period and to find that optimal wealth we can exp we can use we have shown before basically that the discounted value the discounted the, there is like this process which is called a discounted portfolio process is a martingale we have seen that right uh, and so using using that property we can just say like x0 needs to be equal to the expected value under the real neutral wall of x and the discounted portfolio process right one to the power n but in our case basically n the end of the period is just two so just 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 basically two here two and we know the the reasonable trial probabilities so we can find this exp the expectation on the reasonable trial probabilities of this expression and that's all what we did here right so basically this this thing here is just coming from this part of the equation the 0 0.25 we're multiplying each of these guys and that is because just because at the 0 0.25 this one over four is represented for all uh, the state of the for all all the all these random variables the same so we can just take it out and then set it to four because our initial wealth is four so doing that then we have now this represent basically four equations and we have four unknowns so what that means is at the end of the tree we can really find basically how much the, the optimal in the optimal way how much the value of our portfolio is going to be at the end of those those trees but then we have we have found basically what the optimal xh xt 
XTH, XTTR. But what we really need to find is like how much we need to trade. So this is what these guys that we need. But it's very easy. Now we can just reuse the binomial asset model uh, techniques that we use that we used before. We just need to imagine basically that these guys are coming from the from the payoff of a derivative security that pays basically the derivative security where Vn is just big equal to like these values that for each state of the coin tosses. Right, so we have a derivative security that has like some given payoff at the end of the, uh, the end of the pe period, and we want to replicate the, the value of this derivative security by trading in the money market, and uh, and 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 the security that we have. Given that there is no arbitrage, then we can just find then using the exact same thing before, and find basically all the how the investors need to trade to be perfect. And just as a reminder, I um, probably don't need to do this, but. Uh, for example, delta 1, T, when we do that, we can find that by using, well, the formula would probably look something like this, right? So that would be X, T, H, minus X, T, T, divided by S, T, H, minus S, So this is just like one example, but we have seen in the previous videos, uh, I think it was the multiplayer binary model where these numbers are coming from and how we found all these guys. So just applying the things we learned in the very first video. And that's it. So I'd just like to uh, recapitulate what we just did. So the optimal investment problem can be stated in this different method, using the different method. We can say we have an agent that starts with initial wealth, x0, and the agent wants to maximize its, its utility he gets from his portfolio at the given time period and in the future. So to do that, we can just basically, max, the problem we need to solve is just maximize this amount, subject to the, uh, that the, that the port discounted portfolio protest process is a martingale under the risk neutral world. And this is how basically, when we're trying to solve a problem, right, that's that's really like the maximize the expected utility from his portfolio in the real world. Because I'm an investor, uh, I care about real world probabilities, right? But even even then, this is we can the re, the risk neutral world, this imaginary world uh, probability measure, can help us really solve problems that are very uh, that are very relevant. So we just basically, when we solve this problem, we can find all the excellence at the optimal uh, wealth of our portfolio in the future. Then we can just use the no arbitrage method in the binomial asset pricing to really find the optimal strategy, to find like basically the deltas that we need to replicate the portfolio and hence replicate the per perfect strategy. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, feel free to subscribe, comment, and let me know if so that we can all learn together. That would be amazing. Thank you. Bye-bye.